what are we looking at here, folks? Folks are putting both the finding and the diagnosis in the chat, so good. So on the left, the arrow is absolutely pointing to a bite cell. And on the, on, that was on the left, on the right, we see Heinz bodies. And some of you all are so good in the chat, my goodness, you have the image on the left, the image on the right, you have the disease. Um, as folks have already been putting in the chat, this is really classic for G6PD, right? Um, and, and again, sometimes I wanna reassure you, it can be stressful. Is this a bite cell? Is it a schistocyte? Great question. Often the clinical scenario will clue you in. So for instance, G6PD, what are some triggers for a, G, a G6PD flare? Go ahead and put it in the chat. Yeah, so some medications. I love that fava beans are being brought up because I've never seen a clinical case of it, but it shows up on every exam, so good to know. Um, and then just, just illness in general, whether it's um, an infectious disease um, or otherwise, perfect. So that's sort of the story that you would hear for G6PD deficiency. You look at the peripheral smear, bingo, you've got, um, you've got your diagnosis of G6PD. Now, let's say helmet cells, schistocytes, um, those you see more with the, let's say it's testing microangiopathic hemolytic anemia. There you're seeing, oh, their platelets are also low. Or in DIC, they also have sepsis and uh, their coags are messed up, you know, in terms of their fibrinogen and their PT and PTT. Um, or you get a really suggestive history in terms of an exposure, a potential exposure to an E. coli that would lead to hem hemolytic uremic syndrome. The, the vignette, the story will be hugely important in terms of uh, helping you get to the right diagnosis. The image just helps you get across the finish line, giving you confidence that you've got the right diagnosis. And of course you have the immune cells taking literal bites out of these, uh, out of these cells, giving them that very classic appearance. 